<laughs> Hello and welcome to another exterior video where I work on my truck. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. And on today's video, hopefully I'm gonna be able to do something that I really wanted to do very long time. I know I always say it, but anyways, today I'm planning to work on my skid plates. It's been a long time that I've been trying to research, trying to find out where I can buy them, where I can get them, but the prices are all outrageous, at least for me. So I was looking to even have some local shops to fabricate them, but that is even more expensive than to buy them online. So to make a long story short, I actually went ahead, I bought 316 sheet metal, uh, 8 by 4 feet, they don't sell it any smaller than that. So my plan is to measure it, cut it and try to make it work. Try to make my own skid plates. So my plan is to fabricate the skid plates myself. So I'm not sure if that's gonna work out or not, but stick around. It should be interesting either way. <laughs> All right guys, so this is my, just a simple sheet of metal that I got. It's 316 thickness. It's of course it was bigger piece, but I had them to cut it over there in three pieces at the shop. It was a little bit extra money, but not a big deal. Just $7 per cut. So hopefully, whatever I estimated, this to be my engine skid plate. So hopefully that's gonna work out. And I already did some off camera work. I made my template for the engine skid plate with a, uh, with all the measurements over here. So now I'm just gonna trace it all and mark all the bends where I need to make the bends and I'm gonna start cutting all the extra pieces of metal here. And for that I'm just gonna use a simple grinder, my Harbor Freight grinder that I use for Titan Swap and I also picked up this blade. Hopefully it's gonna cut right. And of course whenever you're cutting make sure you have uh, gloves and protective eyewear. So all of these measurements I found online, there is uh, some uh, files for skid plates and I was going off that. So I don't know if that's gonna work out or not. So on that blueprint, the actual width supposed to be 26 and a half, but I made it one inch longer because my idea was to have a, a half an inch on both sides. So maybe later I can bend it for it to have an extra support. But as of now, I did not estimate that before when I was when I was asking them to make a cut. So now one side is half an inch shorter. So it might work out, it might not work out, we'll see. So now I'm just gonna trace this out and I'm gonna start cutting these extra pieces. Alright guys, one piece is out, this is pretty thick metal, maybe I should have went with a slightly thinner metal, but this is gonna be good protection. I don't know how long this disc gonna last, maybe I'm gonna need to buy more of them, but so far it's cutting, it's taking its time, but it's cutting. So now I'm gonna cut the other side, and then I'm gonna mark where I need to make my bends. Both sides are cut, and I already measure how long each section is supposed to be, and on these lines I'm supposed to make the bends. I have to make one bend at 15 degrees, 11 degrees, 40 degrees, and this one going back 50 degrees. Now, of course, I don't have a press or anything to bend it. So my plan is to, to cut halfway in or maybe less. I don't know. We'll see. And because I'm going to have a cut all along the side over here and over here and over there, of course, that should make it easier for me to bend it. Once I bend it, put it in a place, maybe in the end, I even going to weld it. Now, these pieces over here, here, and here, my plan is to cut it as well and bend it for extra support. And the same thing over here. I don't know if it's gonna interfere with anything, but we'll see if it's gonna interfere, I'll just gonna cut it. And theoretically, this is pretty thick metal. It's not gonna easily bend, so maybe that's not even necessary. Maybe I'm complicating things. So now my plan and hope start bending all the smaller pieces first to the 50 degrees, 40 degrees and then the two bigger pieces for 15, 
and 11 degrees and hopefully it's all gonna work out if if this is not gonna work out i don't know what i'm gonna do maybe i need to cut it more but we'll see well wish me luck guys All right, guys, all the cuts are done. So I had to move into the garage because uh, it started to rain, but the work has to go on. It looks like it wants to move, but not quite yet. So previously I did this. I was trying to bend this, but the cut was not deep enough. So it actually started bending the, the Kindles without bending the, the plate. So now I'm gonna try to do this again. It actually starting to bend, so that's a good thing. All right, guys, so I made these two simple leverages over here. Just two pieces of Kindle with uh, some washers in between to give a uh, space. So now with two of them, let's try to bend this and hopefully it's going to work out this time. All right, guys, as you can see, with a lot of effort, but it's starting to bend. So now I'm going to continue bending until I get 50 degrees and then we're going to start doing the other band. All right, guys, as you can see, my setup has changed a lot. And as you can see, and I made new my pulleys or I don't know how you can want to call them because this Kindle was just simply bending and breaking. But with this setup and with a bunch of weights on the floor, I am able actually slowly Bend it and bend it and now I have 50 degrees angle over there. That's what we need 50 degrees So if we test it over here, there we go. We have a 50 degrees nice finally With a lot of effort, but this got done So now I'm gonna try to do the 40 degrees bend and then the remaining two. We'll see what happens So as you can see the skid plates is coming along, but the bands are not what they are on the blueprint I actually making my own bands. They are somewhat the same over here on the blueprint, this one is says to be 50 degrees, but I have it at 45. And this one is at 40 degrees, but I have it at 35. This is somewhat the same, 11 degrees or somewhere around there. But this band, I made it at 35 degrees. This one's gonna go out all the way to the radiator. So now my radiator is gonna be somewhat protected as well. All right, guys. So this is my initial look. How the plate is looking over here. All right, so now my plan is to fabricate some kind of bracket from here to secure it through here to the plate. So this portion is all secured. It's not gonna go up and down or anything. I mean, I do have uh, quite a bit of a space there, but that's fine. I would rather prefer to have more space there than to be all the way against the diff and uh, an oil pan. So in case if I hit the rocks, it's not gonna damage it or anything. So I'd rather lose one inch of clearance in the front over here than to run into anything else. So now I'm gonna try to figure something out. I'm gonna fabricate this, um, secure it, and gonna start making the holes and gonna see how I'm gonna mount it. All right guys, so one bracket is cut and bent. This is the amount of bend I need. And this is gonna be my second bracket, so then I'm just gonna cut it in half over here. And then also what I'm gonna do, I already mark it over here, I'm gonna cut out this piece. And actually I'm gonna put it over there on the side. And I'm gonna try to weld it in there in place. That way it's gonna have extra support so it's not gonna bend in. At least it's not gonna bend in as easier. 
So that's the plan. And also I'm gonna try to weld that bend in there to reinforce it. So both brackets are ready. All the parts are cut out and cleaned. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to weld this and weld this part over here and then we can mark our holes for the where we're gonna mount this to the frame and then what I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna make two holes here and this is gonna be mounted to the plate so the plate is gonna be screwed into this I'm not gonna weld this to the plate because I'm not gonna swell it to the plate so now I'm gonna try to weld this bracket together I actually already did weld it one I mean maybe it didn't come out perfect but I'm not a professional welder or anything. I still have to clean this all up. But I'm pretty sure this will serve the purpose. It's gonna be strong enough to hold anything. So now I'm gonna weld another one and then just gonna try to clean it all up. All right, so now I'm just gonna clean them, uh, grind the all there is residue off, and then I'm gonna start marking where I'm gonna make the holes to attach it to the frame. So I marked two of my holes where I'm gonna make my holes for the bolts, and these are the type of bolts I'm gonna be using. It's M8125, uh, and this is, I believe, a grade 8, so they're pretty strong bolts. Gonna make these two holes over here, so that way I can mount the plate in the back, and it's gonna be all straight in there. Hopefully, and then I can work on my front brackets. So the skid plate is in place. That's pretty much how it's gonna be going up to cover the radiator. I mean, it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, so now I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna secure, how I'm gonna secure this bracket over here so I can make a hole on it. And that will indicate where I'm gonna make a hole to secure it to, with a bolt to the bracket over here. So all the holes are through on the brackets for over here and for the bottom. For the bottom to mount to the skid plate, I'm actually going to be using these uh, 316 grade 8 screws. So they're going to fit there perfect. And to secure it to the frame, I'm going to reuse the bolts that are holding the torsion bar, which is no longer there anyways. So they fit perfect over here as well. So now I'm going to mount them in place and then I can mark the hole for the where I need to drill on my skid plate and then I can take it out and prepare it to be mounted. So my custom brackets are on, all mounted. I think they came out rather nice and yeah they're not gonna go anywhere from here. I mean this is the same thickness as this metal holding over here so I have this reinforcement over here so that all should be good. So now I'm gonna try to put the plate in and make sure all the holes still match. I might have to enlarge one of them in the back, but we'll see. So now I'm gonna work on reinforcing all the bands. I'm gonna clean them in the grinder, and then I'm planning to weld them, something in there maybe to make it stronger so it's not gonna flex or anything. And, and after that, maybe I can prepare the plate to be painted or something. <laughs> but for now, I'm just gonna work on welding it, and it's a perfect day today. It's almost 90 degrees to weld outside. It's perfect. <laughs> So all the welds on all the bends are done on both sides and over here I put a piece of steel and I welded across the same, the same on the other side. So now I'm gonna think what I'm gonna do with this that I left that I was thinking to bend it in and um, for extra reinforcement. I might even cut this completely off because I really think that is not necessary. As over here I cannot even go all the way because it's gonna interfere with the lower control arm. So guys, unfortunately my grinder died, I cannot anymore continue today working on this uh, skid plate. And just look at the difference from the one I'm making and from the factory plate. Look at this little metal sheet and look at this, what a difference. So my custom brackets are done as well, welded, mounted, they sit perfect in there. So that's good as well. Two thousand years later. And welcome back guys to a second part of my skid plate work. 
for the engine and the radiator. So the skid plate is pretty much done. All the welds are done. I'm gonna try to show you better, but hopefully you guys can see it. I reinforced all my welds from original welding. I didn't like it, so I kind of scraped it off a little bit. And I really went crazy over here on the welding. I also added this extra edge over here and over here for support. There is nothing over here because otherwise it's going to be interfering with the lower control arm, I feel like. Unfortunately, I also had to enlarge slightly the holes because they slightly don't match. <laughs> but it's okay, we're still going to use washers. So you can see over here all the welding, how it looks. It doesn't look pretty, maybe. On the inside, especially I didn't sand it off or anything, didn't grind it because I just want to leave it there for extra support. And this is extra half inch edge over here, welded from both sides. You can see that over here it's welded. And on the other side as well. Hopefully that's gonna do something. Hopefully that's gonna help for extra support. And I welded this over here. So this plate is pretty much done. And comparing this to the original skid plate, this little skinny sheet of metal, this is this is a big improvement. So now I'm just gonna degrease this, clean it all off, and I'm gonna start painting it. So this is my simple setup, of course, again. So now with the acetone, I'm gonna degrease it, just wipe it all off, nice and neat. Just whenever you work with it, be careful, don't get in your eye, especially, and use gloves. You don't want to get in your skin. And just wipe everything out to have everything clean. On the inside, I'm planning to paint it just with a primer first, and then I'm just gonna spray it with a flat black paint, because it's gonna be inside anyways. Now, on the other side, I'm planning to paint it with this hammered paint. Uh, for that, supposedly you don't even need the primer, it says over here, and it stop rust says as well, whatever that means, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that will ever stop rust. Nothing ever stops rust. Once rust is there, it's there. Anyways, so this side I'm planning to paint it with this color because the skit not only wanted to be visible for just to show off, no. Uh, whenever you go off-roading, you, you want to have the skit play different colors so you can differentiate how far it is from the dirt and everything. So, let's get on with painting. All right, I'm gonna continue painting and then we'll come back for this. All right, and the first layer is done on this side. Now I'm gonna do the other side and then we come back over here to paint it one more time. So now I'm just gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna apply another layer. And also last time I couldn't finish it because my grinder died. So I went and I bought this grinder by Bauer. So I already have the big and pack gun. The, the one I used to take out the lug nuts and disassemble my truck for a Titan swap. So I decided to go with this brand. It seems to be a very good brand. Uh, of course it has a shield over here and a handle. I just took it off when I was polishing it. Um, so hopefully this tool will last. And maybe even I'm gonna invest more in these tools. Who knows? So all the paint is dry. So now I'm gonna paint the inside with a black paint, just a flat black paint. And then the other side, I'm gonna paint it with this hammer. So it's sort of gonna be like uh, silver, not silver, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, so both sides are done. Now it just has to dry. So as you can see, this side, the other side is gonna be some of the silver color. So now I'm just gonna let it dry and then we can start mounting into the truck. All right, so after many, many man hours of work, the skid plate is finally done, but I feel like it was worth it. It was a very nice learning experience. So it's all painted. So once again, this is my original skid plate, just sheet of metal, and this is a new one. So now I'm just gonna crawl under there and mount it. And then I'm gonna show you and how it's mounted, what bolts, but pretty much it's just five bolts in there. And we're gonna see how it's gonna look. Uh, maybe I'm not even gonna record that part as I'm under the truck, just making a lot of noises. <laughs> I don't think that's gonna be entertaining. Oh, 
finally guys the plate is finished and it's mounted maybe it's not perfect maybe it's not amazing or anything but it's done and i'm pretty sure it's gonna work as intended in a matter of fact before i painted it i put it on just to make sure that all whole match and I was able to lift up my front of a truck with a jack in there and the plate didn't bend I put it in the middle of there and I lift it up no problem so now let's get under the truck and I'm gonna try to show you how it's mounted in there so first of all you probably noticed that I painted red I had some red paint over so I decided just to paint it for why not so now coming over to the front you can see that I have my brackets over here and then these bolts are 3 8 and they're grade 8. All the bolts that I use are grade 8 so they are hard bolts supposedly. So it goes all the way through and over here it's mounted with a nut and with a washer on both sides and as you can see the plate sticks out all the way to the front. Okay, can I continue now? Anyways, the plate sticks out all the way to the front and it's protecting the radiator as well. Like I said later, I'm probably gonna build maybe something here. Maybe. Or maybe it's gonna be connected to my bumper in the front, we'll see. So this is over here. Then over here, I have a little bit of a gap. Maybe it's a bigger gap than usual, but I don't mind it. That way I have more space before I hit any interior components and nothing gonna get damaged there and of course over here has it I have it written first with this angle that I welded from both sides and over here as well so now coming to the back I have mounted it with two bolts that screwed to the factory frame which are M8 1.25 threads and again I'm using a grade 8 bolts and a grade 8 washers over here and over here I actually drilled the frame I use 3 inch bolt which is this 5 16 bolt with the washers on both sides just to give it extra extra support and strength I'm pretty happy the way it came out it's super strong it's super strong what a project it was it was a lot of work I will admit that but it was well worth it and it was a good learning experience as well for me to practice more welding trying those bends and everything so now my next project is going to be to working on a transfer case skid plate. So for there, I'm already going to be more prepared. I really like how it came out and especially for I did it myself and I didn't have to pay so much money. I mean, yes, maybe it's easier to buy it online, which probably of course it is. Yes, it's probably better made. It's uh, more refined, but it's underneath. It's going to get beat up, scratched anyways. Um, if you have time and you're willing to take a challenge, this is a great learning experience. So I'm happy that it's all worked out. So like I said, my next project is going to be working on transmission skid plate and then on a transfer case. So that's going to be my separate next videos. But for now, I'm happy and I feel more confident going out on off-road that my oil pan, engine and partially even radiator is all protected and covered. So I really hope you guys enjoyed these videos and you might find them entertaining at least or maybe you learn something new along the way with me. So on this note I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. I hope you might find it helpful and until next time everybody bye!